In this tutorial I'd like to tell about two basic generators, Noise and Voronoi, and the most widely used adjust generator, the Curves, and say a couple of words about the heat output. The Noise generator creates a fractal parallel noise map that is widely used as a base for various map creation algorithms. I'll connect it to the output to demonstrate how it works. Seed parameter is a number used to initialize pseudo-random generator. This is a local seed parameter that could be unique for each generator. Together with a global seed, it specifies an overall map randomness. Intensity is the amount of influence of the generator. When the value is set to zero, the generator effect is not visible. Noise intensity is limited by the value of one. Size parameter determines the size of the biggest fractal. Lower size values result in a very homogeneous and predictable noise while high values can create diverse noise and scenic heat maps. Note that with the reducing the value, intensity should be reduced too. Detail parameter determines the big and small fractal bs. The default value is 0.5. When the parameter is higher, small fractals have greater impact, which results in a ruffled map. When the parameter is below 0.5, small fractals are less significant than the big ones which results in a more smooth noise. Value of 0 will remove all fractals except 1, leaving a parallel noise. The noise pattern could be moved along x and z axes by using the offset parameter. Now, when we are a bit familiar with the noise, let's create a Voronoi generator. A Voronoi map looks like a mosaic composed of irregular convex polygons. The type determines how exactly the Renault algorithm is calculated. Flat type will create flat planes located at the different levels. Other types can produce interesting patterns like a uh, regular golf ball, this one that is hard to describe, cellular it is the default parameter. The organic is very useful for detailization pattern. Here we can see the intensity slider, again like in the noise, but now it can be any value. The cell count determines the number of the mosaic cells, that is, the scale of the Voronoi pattern. The lower the value, the bigger the pattern is. Note that cell count should be equal to the power of 2. The uniformity determines the diversity of the cells. With the value of 1, all cells are equal and they get more unique with the decrease of the uniformity value. The seed value determines the random pattern, just like in the noise generator. Now you may notice that these generators have not only outputs, but two input parameters. This is because these generators are additive and could be stacked together. Let me show you how. First of all, I increase the raw noise pattern size and make it a bit more sane. And then I'll connect the noise to the heat output and make it a bit more uniform. And now I'll add the Renault at top of the noise. On the noise at top of the Renault, it really doesn't matter. By disabling each of the generators, you can see that they are blended together, and the final result is equal to the sum of their values. Now about the curve. It's a very powerful just generator, and although it's a bit confusing in the beginning, especially when you haven't worked with Photoshop curves, it's easy to get used to it. I'll create a curve generator and connect it between the noise and the heat output. Here, the horizontal axis are the input values, and the vertical values are the outputs. Imagine that the curve is a huge slope from the top of the terrain to the zero level. Similar to this one. Now let's bend it to achieve a desired shape. 
The curve interface is similar to the animation curve interface in Unity. There are key points that could be added by right-clicking on the line and selecting Add Key, and tangents that determine curve direction near the key point. Now when we shape the curve this way, you can see that the slope is bending accordingly. There are lots of things that could be done using the curves. Inverting the map, for example. Or making more contrast. Here you can see that the map generally have only two values zeros and the values of 1. Now, if you'll take a closer look at the terrain, especially at the ruffled one, you may notice that it has a lot of hard and clearly visible edges. It's just because of the map resolution of 512. Increasing the resolution will increase the generating time. There is another way to smooth the terrain, by changing head output scale value. This parameter also affects the performance, but not as much as the increasing resolution. Now, when we achieved some initial land formation, let's paint it with textures. This is the topic of the next tutorial.